On the breakfast, Russia intensifies bombing in Ukraine. Once the West, NATO as President Vladimir Putin puts nuclear forces on high alert. Top 10 Electoral Acts Amendment Bill signed into law by President Mohamed Buhari. How will they profit the electorates? And as always, we'll be taking a look at the National Dailies this beautiful Monday morning. It's a beautiful Monday morning. We're back with uh, The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, a bumper package of discussions and analysis for you. I'm Kofi Butchhouse. And I am Messi Bokos. Good to be back on your screen this Monday morning. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Lots to talk about. Lots happening. I must say, Messi, you're, you're shining today. Um, thank you. And, uh, no, you look fantastic. sharp as well. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. We try. <laughs> we try. Um, a lot to talk about. Um, you know, the... Well, the weekend was really busy. Uh, yeah, Nigerians were, were, were busy. So we would start with a top trending you know, segment and look at what's been talked about. Um, uh, I, I followed the, the NDLEA uh, discussion online you know, uh, in a part of Lagos where they went on a raid. Um, some persons were said to have died in that raid. And um, not a few Nigerians came out, especially the young people, uh, to lambast the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency um, for invading a part of Lagos um, Island called Pate Street in a sort of um, a, a drug bust, a sting operation, we'll call it that. Um, we heard there was at least one casualty. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency has come out with a statement which we have, um, and through the spokesman of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, uh, Femi Baba Femi, he has had to say um, that the agency and its, uh, its officials Yes, indeed, went for that operation. Yes, indeed, that those that were seen in that video, um, viral footage shot with someone's phone, uh, operators of the NDLEA. Uh, but he's saying that it was, uh, they had to raid a drug den uh, where they arrested the kingpin of um, uh, a drug, a drug, um, I, I don't want to call it cartel, cartel. because, you know, we, you <laughs> it know, sounds like it, we're in Colombia. Yeah, you know, but anyway, um, so six others apart from this drug kingpin in court. It should be more like queen pin because it's a queen <laughs> pin. Is a queen? Yeah, queen pin because she's is a she. But let's stick to what we know. Kingpin. So the seven in all. Um, the NDLEA seen they recovered five thousand eight hundred and twenty six kilograms of drugs, and then they put the video out because, of course, Twitter was the the place where this you know back and forth. I, I think the NDLEA officials were feeling the heat of. Uh, uh, backlash by Nigerian youth. But we have we have the video, the viral footage. This is user-generated content. And then I think we also have the, um, uh, we will play rather the videos put up by, by the NDLEA of who they call their, their suspects. So let's look at that. Well, uh, we actually saw that video and uh, really, really, it's been a lot of conversation ongoing. So you can see the video just before, you know, we got back on screen. The question I was asking is why they've been asked as well. So, but... To be very honest, there's nothing wrong if you have the NDLEA, you know, going after uh, the drug 
king pings. You or, say it's a queen, queen pings. pings. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think it's a generic, you know, to just describe those who are in the cartel. Yes, definitely, I mean, definitely. But, you know, I think that what's been queried here is the mode of operation. That's what a lot of people have talked about. I mean, for, for a second, I just wondered what's going on. It feels like what we see in the movies. Mm -hmm. And I did mention Colombia. It's already looking like we're, oh, you um, know. What's his name again? <laughs> The guy on Netflix. Um. So, no, let's just continue. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's what a lot of conversation is about. I mean, if you if you know that particular sport and that particular area, mm -hmm. first of all, you look at it, it's a residential area. It has, uh, there's a lot of commercial activities. Yeah. And so yeah. there might just be civilian casualties, the fact that you're shooting. So the, the big question, and you know that with the fight against insecurity, we've constantly talked about the issue of intelligence. So in my mind, I'm wondering, is, is it not possible that these drug lords and kingpin and queen pins could actually be picked out without having to, you know, put out all of that display? Even though we, we hear the NDLA say they were going to make some arrests, but they were rather re repelled, they were attacked, uh, you know, because these drug lords actually enforced, had, you know, um, their men come through to attack them, and that was the case. But in the videos that we have seen, I, I really, I haven't really seen any, um, you know, shooting from the NDLA and then also being, you Any know, shooting from, going their way. yeah, going their way. So I'm just wondering, you know, where did the attack come yeah, from? You, and so the mode of oppression is one thing that Nigerians have questioned. A lot of people have talked about that. I'm also wondering, is there no, is there no way we probably would have carried this operation without being very loud, without looking like we're already in a battlefield? You know, when you said loud, you didn't mean you didn't intend any pun there. No, <laughs> I mean like we, you're just having guns. Yeah. It feels like we're in a you know, in a battleground, and anything can happen, you know, bullet. Now, some people say that the bullets that were actually being used were just uh, empty bullets, they were just um, not, you know, live ammunition and all so of that. But some people, rubber bullets. Yes. Mm. But some people say that you, 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 those bullets, you have no idea what, you know, impact those bullets can actually Yeah, because I mean, one of the videos, you saw someone being rushed, you know, someone being rushed, um, carried by people. Uh, uh, let, let's just read a snippet of very quickly the NDLE uh, statement. They say, Major, this is what they put out. A major drug uh, kingpin, you know, operating in notorious Pate, Lagos Island drug haven in Lagos State, uh, to put her name, uh, has been arrested along with six other suspects uh, by the NDLEA uh, with um, uh, 5,862 kilograms, that's a lot, of assorted illicit drugs. They mentioned loud. And <laughs> okay. No wonder you were no very particular when I said loud. loud yes, yes. Um, <laughs> and you look, at, you look at the the bench there, you see some bottles like... Um, Cough syrup. Hmm. So I thought I said probably codeine. You know, um, they say following credible intelligence and follow up surveillance uh, on illicit drug dealing in Osho, Gambari, and Beecroft Streets. It's a Beecroft Street in Calabar, by the way. A part of area of, of, of Lagos Island. Anti narcotic officers stormed Gambari Street base of the drug campaign where they arrested her and six of her accomplices uh, at 9 30 a.m. on Saturday, 26 February. They went on to say other members of the cartel. Um, uh, attacked the operatives, um, or rather mobilized hoodlums who attacked the operatives with stones, bottles, and guns in a bid to prevent the officers from arresting other pink kingpins marked for arrest, as well as taking the suspects already nabbed uh, and drug ex exhibits away. Um, so, so this is what they're saying that um, they came under attack, and that they they had other kingpins to 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 target to pick up. But unfortunately, they couldn't pick those other kingpins up because of the attacks that uh, they faced. Now, we do know um, from recent history that we've had clashes between uh, groups of Agbero, mm. what uh, Lagosians call Agbero, or NDLEA, though I still don't feel comfortable with the NDLA being called Agbero. But you re you remember that they've had at least two fights or clashes in recent months. And uh, in at least one of them, if not both, we've had gunshots being fired. So that guns are available to hoodlums or Agbero or whoever in that part of Lagos is not, is not in question. The question is, did the NDLEA need to fire? You know, did they need to shoot sporadically? And how many people were affected? Did anyone die? Or how many people died? But um, um, we have a drug problem. A lot of Nigerian youth keep questioning the methods of the NDLEA. Uh, Femi Baba Femi put out um, a law that stipulates that um, the NDLEA is allowed to go ahead and, uh, um, you know, without a warrant, search anybody, not just the NDLEA, even the customs and police, um, search anyone who may be suspected to have drugs on them um, or any premises 
you know, in the, in the enforcement of the nation's drug laws, they are permitted to, to without a warrant, search. You know, so, I mean, some have argued that this is at variance with the Nigerian constitution, therefore null and void, you know, but it's left to the, um, what do you call it, constitutional eggheads uh, to, to, to argue out. But the fact is that the rights of Nigerians need to be protected so that people are not victimized, because, you know, when these things get out of hand, sometimes the innocent are... Uh, the casualties and they get victimized we call collateral damage uh, also on the other hand we also need to realize we have a big drug problem in nigeria but in lagos in particular um i think i've shared with you in recent time where on the streets of lagos not far from where we're seated um i've been approached you know by boys just young guys just in in the broad day night let me call it that <laughs> selling loud and offering to to to, to sell to me so um, just um, before... Maybe we should move on because yeah. they're not far from us. <laughs> you no, know, you no, know, but, but, anyway. but, but just before we move uh, away now, just quickly, this one is that uh, the people have actually said that the battle should be taken to none. If the NDLE, NDLEA is actually strong on you know this one, if we need to battle the use of illicit drugs and what have you, mm. then the battle, I don't know, where, where should we call it a battle? It's not a battle. We should try to get to those who actually supply. And if you find out, if you look at the cartel, the kingpins, yeah. uh, the kingpins and you know the lords of this you know drug business, illicit drug, you find so out that they're not just um, poor men. That's not the word to say. They're not just um, common people. They're not just you know mere Nigerians. They are people who are highly placed, very influential. And if you follow also, if you look at some other countries, if you follow the story of drug and you know the cartels and how it's been done, you just find out that those who trade in it are not just you and I. <laughs> it's just some highly placed person. And some people are saying that you know it feels like the, the, the organization right now is geared is attacking uh, the users of drugs. Why don't you go to those who are supplying it? But this is a, a conversation anyway, for another anyway, day. We need I, to I, th I think I think for for it's wise to to pipe down on you know the one that is just nearby <laughs> no i just in, think in, in that case they're watching <laughs> it's fine now na walk with they do <laughs> <laughs> all right let's move on um uh, one of the leading voices in the nsas protests also one of the leading voices um in the bring back our girls movement aisha yesufu is um is not taking it things lightly with uh, isa bayero Issa Bayer happens to be a relative of the current uh, mayor of Kano. And of course, um, this has to do with um, uh, the, the letter written by Issa Bayero to the Nigerian authorities asking for sanctions or some sort of disciplinary measures on air peace, following um, a sort of what they call disrespect, not just to the Kano Emirates, but to the people, the entire people of Kano State and uh, subjects of the Kano Emirates. What happened was that. Um, uh, the his eminence, the salt, the emir of Kano, um, was on his way. I hope I got the title right. Back from uh, Banjul in Gambia to Nigeria, um, he is said to have had a delayed flight caused by air peace, and it's happened to me before, so I can relate. When he got to the international wing of the Motala Mohammed Airport or international airport, um, it took him. He had just about thirty minutes to get from the international wing to the domestic wing. He had just about 30 minutes. And obviously, when you look at clearing your, your luggage and, you know, getting everything with your entire entourage and moving the entire entourage from the international wing to the domestic wing, 30 minutes is definitely not enough. So Isa Bayero is said to have called Oscar Oyema, um, uh, Mr. Oyema, the, uh, the, the owner of APs, and, and told him, we need you to, uh, to slow down the plane because we're running behind time. We had a flight delay. Uh, in Banjo, Gambia. Um, unfortunately, that couldn't happen. And uh, the flight left from Lagos to Kano. Um, and, and this is why this letter has come out. Now, Airpeace had re released, uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, I said Oscar Yama, Alan Yama. Airpeace had released a message, uh, uh, a statement detailing their side of the story and calling out Isa Bayara and saying it wasn't true that they had uh, disrespected the Emir of Kano, the Kano Emirate and the people of Kano. Now what they tried to do was simply to um to see how they can they can they can give the Emir and not put him in a position where people will the public will castigate him. And the, what they said was that they feel that it will even be against the image uh, of of the, the Emir and the Kano Emirate if the news gets out that 
the flight, which was already about a taxi at the, at the time they called, mm. was stopped on the tarmac or on the runway. Because of... And, uh, yes, and then how to reverse. And they would have been there for about an hour before the mayor got there. You know, so so they said, um, uh, Your Highness, they may we, we respect you, we value you. But all we did was to protect your image and that of airpiece. Because if people film you going into the aircraft just because they, uh, after they waited for one hour, it won't be fair and to be good on you. Um, however, the argument can be made for the Emir that he was delayed because uh, of airpiece from Banjo. You know, now what Alan Oyama is saying that they didn't say they won't stop the plane, he actually made calls. Um, to the head of operations, I think, of Air Peace, a lady who called the, those on the airport on ground and it was found out that they could not, they could not stop the plane at the time. And they wanted to get uh, another flight, mm. Mm, another flight, this time the 7 a.m. flight, because this was meant to be a, um, another, I think, six something, 7 a.m. flight from Lagos to Abuja and then from Abuja to Kano. That's what they wanted to do at no expense, extra expense rather to, to the MS. So, so which, well, if you ask me, which I think is actually a fair deal at the end of the day, because um, this is actually a flight that's also um, transporting or conveying, you know, all the passengers mm. uh, who probably would have would have been on different assignment. Mm. And yes, we totally understand the fact that this is a very prominent person. He's an Emir, but also let's also look at it. That flight was not just going to be. He's not just going to be the only one. If it was an empty aircraft, then one would have said that that would have actually happened. I just think it's just, uh, um, how would I even say, it's just logical, it's just uh, very reasonable and very humane that, you know, airpiece actually, I'm not standing holding brief for them, but you also need to understand, just like you have mentioned, that if they had gone the other route, then it would have actually painted a bad image. I mean, people would definitely feel like, oh, yes, we waited all of these hours and all of that. So I, I, don't, I don't really know, I don't really see any uh, thing that should have brought about it, but you know how we can be, we're very big on titles, we're very, uh, you know, we're very big on ourselves and who we are and the offices and the positions that we actually mm -hmm. occupy mm -hmm. and constantly we do not have regard for the other person so mm -hmm. imagine how many persons who were on that mm -hmm. aircraft who probably had an assignment who had a meeting with the governor who probably had you know some Very interview to, to you know important things to do mm -hmm. everyone is important no it just reminded me recently i was at one of this um, supermarket and so we're in the queue you know how it can be everywhere in lagos is you have to queue up for everything because of the population and so mm -hmm. yes I, what i was even going to pick in the grocery store wasn't so much so I just had, you know, like a pack of stuff and then I, I had to queue up. And then this young man just walked towards. He's not pregnant. He's not a woman. I mean, let's look at it. He's not an elderly person. We're really going to move on. Okay, but you know, the, the idea, pregnant. yeah, you know, because we make, you have to make excuses for this person. Um, you call them um, older citizen, uh, citizens, you know, you look at an older. Okay, he was a senior citizen. So he, he's not a senior citizen. He's not pregnant. He, you know, not, nothing is wrong with him. So why can't you wait in the queue? And then you come to say, oh, can you excuse me? Everybody is going somewhere where it's important. And this is part of the reason why we constantly you know, need to imbibe this as we proceed in the yes, course of but, 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 but there, our there is, there is a there is a case for, for the Emir here, uh, uh, bearing in mind the fact that he his flight from Banjo was delayed. Uh, I was on a flight from, from uh, Accra some years ago uh, with the same airline, you know. Uh, I won't mention their name. But they also have a blue and red you know, logo. <laughs> um, they delayed me in Accra for four for hours. I got to Lagos and the flight to Lagos, by the time I got to the local wing, had jetted off. I was moving from Lagos to Port Harcourt. It had gone. And I wasn't compensated. I wasn't given anything back. You know, despite all I tried. So so these airlines get a lot away with a lot, you know, that they shouldn't get away with. You know, so um if if he wasn't the mayor, or if he had no call, what would he have done? Um to get back but, but so to do, do you blame the, the do you bl do you blame the airline now in Nigeria? Do you the, blame Epis? The or? next flight from Lagos to Kano was going to be at night. I think either six p.m. or seven p.m. I need to check. But it's on the statement that we just put on the screen. The next flight to Kano from Lagos Epis would have been at night. So if it was anyone like you and I or the Emir had not said anything, he would have had to stay at the airport till night. So the airlines need to also whilst um, we're not saying that they should stop a flight. They should also admit and say, we delayed and we are sorry for delaying you, you know, and, and work on these things, you know, they get away with a lot and it's not too good. Mm. Well, moving away from that, we also um, looking at the conversation that's making the rounds in different spaces is the fact that Russia invaded Ukraine and that has affected, you know, the global community. As much as we want to look at it, Nigerian students also 
in uh, Ukraine and also in Russia have been affected by this. Now we have reports saying that some students have been denied access. I mean the rescue train that's ongoing and the rescue mission ongoing because the airspace has been shut out. So we have outcry from Nigerians who are saying that they have been discriminated against as they're not being allowed you know to the train uh, from different ports that you have from Poland and you know and other parts you know surrounding Ukraine and even Russia so they can get to a safe space. It Cause for a lot of worry, I mean, cause for a lot of concern. Well, the big question here is a lot of people have said a lot, but the question here is uh, what, 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 what is our relationship? Because this is what happens when you constantly have, you know, the Nigerian ambassador to Ukraine, Russia, you have all of these relationships. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the Nigerian government doing to ensure that, you know, at this time, because it's a conflict, it's a period of conflict, it's a, it's a time of war, uh, it's a war zone. Uh, even though some people are saying it's not the very conventional war that you want to experience or we usually would see, but however you want to look at it, it's a conflict zone. And in conflict situation as this, what is the Nigerian government expected to do to protect her citizens who are in this particular you know, kind of conflict? If rescue mission is going on, how can the Nigerian government help? What, we have the embassy, the Nigerian embassy, you, you know, we have uh, you know, foreign minister, we have M, uh, the Nigerian ambassador in, in the, these countries. And so what is actually going on? Uh, what efforts have been? Yes, we know that the government has come out and put several statements, but how effective it is. And the issue of discrimination. So it, it, it's really, really saddening, um, Kofi, because you find out that right now, even in the midst of conflict, it feels like you know racism or discrimination, we don't know what it is, it's still very on. And this is a time where humanity should be the watchword. Everybody should be talking about the fact that you're a human being. It doesn't matter the color that you have. As long as you have the you know necessary documents, which I think that these persons are not illegally you know leaving in this country because that would be a conversation for another day. But um, fingers across, let's see how all of this pans out. Yes, indeed. Um, uh, a number of Nigerians have been filmed, you know, interviewed by um, international, you know, media. Um, and I, I did watch one. Um, I, I don't know why we've not sent you to Ukraine to cover for <laughs> us. You know, it won't be about all your talent should be there. You know, but in, anyway. Um, um, so one of the young men said that you know he was on the queue to get across the border. I think into Belarus, and. Um, uh, to Hungary or Belarus, I'm not sure. But um, he was asked to go back, you know, for the uh, Caucasians to pass. And this is really worrying. This is really worrying. Um, there are a lot of, quite a, a, a sizable amount of Nigerians in Ukraine. You know, even while the Crimean, you know, uh, war has been going on, there are Nigerians in Crimea, there are Nigerians in Donetsk, uh, there are Nigerians in the Donbass area. You know, the Nigerians in Kirkev, the Nigerians in Kiev, in different parts of Ukraine. A lot of medical students are, are there in Ukraine. You know, yesterday it was um, uh, a Nigerian comedian, Chris Clown, who was on Twitter, you know, telling Nigerians about his experiences in Ukraine, uh, why he went to school there, um, and uh, that he has family, you know, a sister and, and others are in Ukraine. And so it was almost like a live update as to, we, we all knew when, when they crossed the border and everything. And calling on Nigerians not to condemn Nigerian students who go to these countries, you know, because the fees were, were, were quite affordable at the time. The Naira was, was stronger than now. But um, on the part of, of the, the federal government, uh, Geoffrey Yema, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, put out a, a statement via Twitter yesterday. He says that, um, uh, I spoke on the phone with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, uh, Dimitro Kuleba, expressed sympathy for the needless loss of lives, destruction. Uh, let's just go to the uh, major thing. Um, he said that the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine um, reverted to state. It's official, no restrictions for foreign nationals uh, to leave the country exists. Problem is a result of chaos on the border and checkpoints leading to them. Uh, I'm personally coordinating with our missions in Ukraine, Poland, Russia, Romania, and Hungary uh, to ensure we get our citizens out of Ukraine and bring back to Nigeria those ready to return while supporting those who are ready to remain in Ukraine. Now, the minister went on to say, we understand how difficult things are at the border. We are reaching the high authorities in those countries and international organization for migration to assist uh, people suffering at the borders. 
uh, missions have been directed to send staff and buses to border points in their respective countries to transport our citizens. And so what's happening is now the authorities, I think, in, in Hungary, um, uh, I think probably in Poland, but I know about Hungary, uh, have brought up a new visa policy that if you are able to get into Ukraine, this is what the minister was saying, you have to make sure you have your Ukrainian you know, visa you know, or resident permit and then you also have your Nigerian passport intact. So when you cross the border, you have these documents, you are entitled to a three-month visa in, in Hungary. You can stay there. Okay. And in, in, in if you want to leave, you can leave from there as well. But I think we have a video. Yes. Uh, let's take a look at this video of Nigerians not allowed into the rescue uh, train. <laughs> Really sad. Very, very disturbing uh, scenes right there. Very disturbing scenes right there. Um, you can see a rescue train with um, Nigerian uh, you know, nationals. Outside. Outside. Um, it's about the skin color, really. And, 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 um, and even at war times, I mean, even conflict situation, mm -hmm. Should we not be, you know, considerate that that's another human being in, in the cold? I'm trying not to, you know, I, I, get it's, in it's, my it's feelings so unimaginable. at this point I mean, time. a country that, that the entire world is coming together for, you know, a country that the entire world is, is banding together for, including African countries, it's, it's, it's really sad to show that they, they, they can't even be fair and humane to other people. Well, well that's so much that we can take at this point in time. Uh, we we'll definitely return with... Uh, top trending conversations surrounding the different spaces and of course generating conversation in our own space. When we return, it will be time for Off the Press. We do have our guest, Opunabon Kotaria, who's on standby. He joins immediately.